How's it going, Brad Winners? Thomas Thunder here, and today I am bringing you guys one final SD class setup video for Modern Warfare before we get into Black Ops Cold War. In this video, I'll be going over five of the best class setups and my favorite class setups to run in SD that's in the current meta of the game. I will be also throwing in two honorable mentions somewhere in the videos, and I also will be throwing in my settings that I currently use at the moment. If you guys do enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Let's get straight into it. So with Modern Warfare slowly reaching the end of the life cycle, this game will still have a big amount of players. It's gonna have a pretty good popularity in terms of a Call of Duty game, so these class setups will still be viable a month or two after Cold War has been released. So I do want to start off with a number five spot, and that is the SPR. The SPR is an absolutely broken marksman rifle. It's very good. It's also very easy to use as the attachments for the gun are very user friendly. There isn't a lot of cons for this weapon. The attachments that I like to run on my SPR are the TAC laser, the Solo Zero SPR 28 millimeter scope, the XRK SP Lite 208 Blitz stock, the 338 Lapua Mag 5R magazines, and the focus perk now focus perk really helps with controlling flinch when being shot if you don't want to use focus you can definitely switch it out for the feather bolt assembly for a faster reach chamber speed now if you've never sniped before i promise you pick up the spr have a few practice games with it and you're gonna definitely get the groove of things when using this gun it's very very good which is why this sniper made the number five spot when usually this is rated by smgs and ars moving on to the number four spot we have the mp5 the mp5 is undeniably one of the better guns in the game has been for the entire life cycle for my mp5 class i've changed it up a lot i've had no recoil classes i've had fast ads and fast sprint to fire speed classes but this is all in all a very good very balanced mp5 class and that is the mono integrated suppressor the merc 4 grip stipple grip tape no stock and 45 round magazine now you can switch the 45 round magazine for 10 millimeter i sometimes like 10 millimeter because of the extra damage it gives you but the recoil is kind of a trade-off and the mp5 really shines as like a uh, mid-range to close range weapon after long range it, it doesn't matter what attachments you use for really any smg they hit mark a lot but the mp5 is one of those guns that's very mobile and very very good especially if you are up in the enemy's face now moving on to the number three spot we have the cr56 amax ever since this gun has come out it's been a force to reckon with the gun is very strong very versatile and the mobility it really isn't that bad for this weapon it also has bullet penetration because it's a 7.62 round weapon. The class that I like to run really hasn't changed. It's the Zodiac Barrel, No Stock, Stipple Grip Tape, Commando Foregrip, and 5 milliwatt Laser. Now for my 5 milliwatt haters, you can definitely take that off and put FMJ as, as one of the perks because FMJ on this gun is a very good option. You're gonna see a lot of people use the CR56, especially back when it, it first came out, people were abusing the hell out of it. The gun is very, very good, and even to today's standards against guns like the AS Val, it can still put up a pretty good fight. Now that the CR56 has been out of the way, there is two other guns in this game that I would recommend running. So that brings us to the number two spot, and that is the Mini Uzi, or in this game, it's just called the Uzi. Everyone knows that the Uzi is ran a certain kind of way. There's three attachments that you always put on the Uzi, but in case you guys didn't know, this is what I run on my Uzi. We have the 4180 rounds, Merc foregrip, no stock, FSS carbine pro barrel, and the monolithic suppressor. Now you can change the monolithic suppressor for like a stipple grip tape or a rubberized grip tape if you want more recoil control or more spin to fire speed. Most people put the stipple grip tape, although I have put rubberized and it's not as bad as you think. It does control the recoil by about 5%. The Uzi is just one of those guns that everybody loves. A lot of content creators that I know love using the Uzi because it's, it's just one of those guns that are very satisfying to use. And it's just one of those guns that a lot of people don't get mad at you for using. It's not like when you whoop out a 725 or an MP5 or an ASVAL and the whole lobby starts roasting you for using those guns. The Uzi requires a bit of finesse. It requires a bit of skill that a lot of people need to realize and need to master to be able to use the Uzi at a very proficient level. But once you know how to use the Uzi, it is definitely worthy of the number two spot. The Uzi is just a very, very good gun all around. Mobility is great. Time to kill is great. The reload can be a bit choppy at times. The reload cancel can be a little off at times, but those are only the little things about the weapon that are bad. All in all, the gun has a few inconsistencies, but it is heavily outweighed by the pros of this weapon. It is an absolutely amazing gun to run. I recommend you using it if you haven't used it already, and you'll see exactly why this gun is in the number two spot. 
Before we head over to the number one gun to run, which a lot of you can probably guess if you've played this game for the past week or two, I do want to give you two honorable mentions that I do not want to forget, and that is the MP7 and the 725. We'll start with the MP7. This is the class setup that I like to run on my MP7. The reason I'm running this class setup is because it is an excellent hip fire machine, an excellent rushing machine, and the gun is very, very accurate with the, with the damage range being up there because of the monolithic suppressor. This is one of the few guns in multiplayer that really need a monolithic suppressor just because it shoots marshmallows if you try to engage anyone after mid range. Now, the second gun is the 725. A lot of you know the 725 as the most annoying gun in the game, as the annoying shotgun everybody runs, but I'm telling you right now, the 725, as annoying as it is, is still a very good gun to run. I can just use this gun and a knife and drop a 20 kill game in search and destroy. This is a very good weapon, still is. It isn't as good as it was when it first came out, but we can't deny that the 725 is an absolute machine. This is the class setup that I run on my 725. You can switch out the sawed off barrel for a longer one if you want a bit more of a tighter spread, but this is for rushing and if somebody is like to your right, you can flick and kill them, especially with the, the wider pellet range that, the, that this barrel offers. Now that we got all those guns out of the way, let's get to the number one spot and you guessed it, it is the AS Val. Now for the AS Val, I actually have two classes that I run for the AS Val. I have a more accurate build and a faster build. I'm gonna give you both of them right now. For the more accurate build, we have this class setup right here. We have the 5 mil wall laser, commando foregrip, 3 round magazine, stipple grip tape, and the VLK Strelock stock. If you like a faster ADS and AS Val, then this is the class setup you can run. I have the 5 mil wall laser, operator foregrip, 30 round magazine, stipple grip tape, and the Stovall 6P30 skelet stock. This one is going to be a tad bit faster than the other one. It won't be as accurate, but the operator foregrip will help your recoil control significantly compared to the commando foregrip. These both, no matter how you run it, are going to be one of the best guns to use in the game. You'll melt anybody, even if they shoot you first. If you manage to get a few shots on them, like two or three bullets, they'll be dead. The ASVAL is one of those guns that I don't think will catch a nerf, honestly, but I think needs one. It's the only gun alongside maybe the SPR that definitely need a nerf. The ASVAL, you can drop 20 kill games easily with this weapon, guys. It's so, so good. And there you have it though, guys. Those are the best guns to use in Search and Destroy in today's meta. So before the video ends, a lot of you have been asking me about my settings, what I like to run with. So here is going to be a video of me running through my settings, just a quick explanation of why I'm using it and what the settings are. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Let's get into that portion of the video. So moving on to the settings portion of the video. In Modern Warfare, I run a mouse sensitivity of 4.68 with a DPI of 800. When I click advanced, everything else is default. My ADS sensitivity is at 0.85 for low zoom and 0.9 for high zoom. Everything else is set to default. I haven't changed any of this stuff up at all. Taking a look at the general tab, I have a field of view of 120 unaffected. Now affected is very, very good if you're playing on PC. Moving down, I have a square minimap shape. Now you guys definitely wanna do that and change your uh, compass cardinal directional text to numbers instead of letters. And then going over to music volume, you do wanna set this to zero. The reason why you wanna set this to zero is when the game starts getting down to the wire, like an S and D match, the game plays music very, very loud <laughs> and it's very, very disorientating. Last but not least, these are my controller settings. If you want to pause the video and take a look at them, I run a 1515 sensitivity on tactical flipped, 0.85 zoom sense focusing aim assist, and I do scale with FOV. Those are the controller settings that I use. I haven't played controller in a very long time. I am a keyboard and mouse player, but uh, that, there's that for you guys. Hope you guys do enjoy the video. If you do, be sure to drop a like. Have a wonderful day.